What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So the moment we've all been waiting for, Ray Epps has finally been sentenced. Yes, you may remember Ray Epps as the guy that, well, he chanted and, and tried to urge protesters on January 6th to go inside the Capitol, one of the only people to actually say out loud, to telling people to go inside the Capitol. Well, he was sentenced today and he was sentenced to no jail time. That's right. So I got an article here from Gateway Pundit. Ray Epps has been sentenced with no jail time, one year probation, a $500 fine, and 100 hours of community service. And they add this little bit in here. It says, justice in America is dead. Lone insurrectionist skates. Yeah, I do have to agree. This was, you know, not really shocking. And, you know, digging into the Ray Epps um, saga, digging into this guy, the deeper and deeper you go, the more questions you have. I mean, people on the left don't find it just a little bit odd that the only guy that they have on film telling people, telling protesters to go inside the Capitol not to mention he was there at the breaching point at the front of the line. It, it is just a whole plethora of reasons why this entire situation is just sketchy. Not to mention he's the only person, the only J6 protester that the J6 committee defends and the left wing prov the media defends. The only J6 protester that was there that day Right, the only person telling people to go into the Capitol was there at the front of the line, and yet he's the only one that's defended by the left wing prob the media and the J6 committee. Liz Cheney, Adam Kissinger, Nancy Pelosi, all of them defend this guy. And I have to say, it's it's a little odd. And that's why I say that like the left doesn't find it a little bit just coincidental. That this guy is is seemingly going to skate on what would appear to be obstruction of an official proceeding. I mean, there's a list of, of stuff that this guy has done. So let's go into this story. All right. I want to get into this because I got a lot of stuff we got to get into when it pertaining to January 6th. So I want to go ahead and get into this. And this article is by the one and only Jim Hoff. This just came out this morning. It says two-tier justice system is no justice. I have to agree with Jim on that one. J6 operative Ray Epps was sentenced on Tuesday to no jail time. Ray Epps, the only January 6 protester who actually told people to go into the Capitol, has been officially sentenced to one year probation, a $500 restitution, and 100 hours community service. Epps did not have to show up for court today. He called in via Zoom. <laughs> Mind you, there has been people sitting in solitary confinement for months. There's people still sitting in prison from that day with no trial, with no date. I mean, all these people's rights are being violated, but yet somehow Ray Epps just mysteriously gets to get out of everything with probation and a $500 fine. I don't know, man. I don't know. So it says the Biden regime refused to charge Epps with hurling a sign at police when eight others are rotting in prison today for just touching the sign. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about this one. So Ray Epps steered the sign towards the police and hurled it at them. He is free today. Our government is broken. Yep. Um, pa uh, Patty McMurray. At 100% fed up, discovered this video months ago. Yeah, I've seen this video with the sign, and unfortunately, this is audio only, so you're not going to be able to see the video, but I will post it to my social media account so you guys can take a look, just so you can have proof. You can see it with your own eyes what this man did versus what other protesters have done and are rotting in prison right now in the DC gulag. So, in this damning video, Ray Epps is filmed hoisting the massive Trump sign with several other Trump supporters. Epps was likely leading the efforts as he led the crowd when they breached not just the first set of barriers to the U.S. Capitol, but also the second set of barriers to the U.S. Capitol that day. Another crime. So in all reality, yes, he's right. Jim is right. He should have been charged with two crimes. 
Two barriers breached means two crimes committed, right? Makes sense, but not in his case. So in the video, you could see Ray Epps near the corner of the sign. And here is a photo, a still shot of the video. Yes, you can, cl you can clearly see Ray Epps in his MAGA hat holding the sign. And mind you, in this photo with all the other people holding that sign have all been charged and sentenced to prison. Or if they're not sentenced yet, they're, they're sitting in prison waiting to be sentenced. Okay? So the, protesters, <clears throat> so the protesters walk it over to where police are standing outside the U.S. Capitol. Ray Epps is with them the entire time. After the sign is released, Ray Epps pops up and is seen standing, directing the crowd. This was captured on video. Patty McMurray discovered this clip. And I'm going to go ahead and play you the audio just in case maybe he says something. I don't know. Here, check it out. Yeah, you can't. There's there's nothing he's going to say. You can't hear anything. All right. So in January, the Gateway Pundit posted an additional video of Ray Epps hurling the sign at police. And it says, please note, no police officers were hurt during this incident. It's essentially a giant Make America Great Again sign. It says Trump 2020, keep America great. It's uh, it's just a giant sign. And yeah, there's Ray Epps in the still shot. You can see him clear as day. Uh, it's wearing the same jacket, same clothes. It is Ray Epps. You can see his face. So today, several men are sitting in prison for touching the sign that passed over their heads that Ray Epps was hurling at the police. So they were essentially crowd surfing the sign and all the people that just touched it to push it forward towards the front are sitting in prison, but not Ray Epps. So... So as Kelly Waldy reported earlier, anyone who touched the sign, an enormous battering ram, according to prosecutors, was denied bond and subject to lengthy prison sentences, except Ray Epps. Yes. So they they had they concluded right in the prosecution. The prosecution said that the crowd was using the sign as a battering ram. That's what in quotations in the filing report, it says an enormous battering ram. Unquote. <laughs> this is the type of stuff that's happening inside your nation's capital, inside Washington, D.C. Oh, and it gets worse, and we're going to get into that in just a second. So the D.C. kangaroo court suddenly changed Ray Epps' in-person public sentencing hearing to a remote Zoom hearing yesterday evening. Epps was scheduled to appear in person today at 10 a.m. at the E. Barrett Pettyman United States Courthouse in Washington, D.C. for his sentencing according to the court docket, on 1-8 of 24. The hearing was modified to a hybrid hearing, which means government in-person defense via Zoom. So as reported by the Gateway Pundit, Epps was just sued by J6 defendant Eric Clark for, quote, conspiracy to violate civil rights. The case was filed in a Utah federal court. Here's where it gets shady. The Gateway Pundit had a tip that Ray Epps was going to be served with the lawsuit at the courthouse during a sentencing. Process servers were hired by the plaintiff, and our reporters were scheduled to be there to capture the moment Epps was served on video. This was all discussed yesterday in private phone calls. Then, like magic, Ray Epps, fairy godmother, changed his public in-person sentencing hearing to a remote telephonic sentencing hearing. What a coincidence. This was approved by the dishonorable Obama-appointed chief judge James Boisberg, I guess his name is. And here's a picture of him, which, you know, you can't see because it's audio only. I'm telling you, folks, I am I, I'm going to be starting a video podcast here soon. I just have to get the space for the studio, but it's going to happen um, because I think it's way more effective, way more efficient uh, to do a video podcast because it's just it's so more effective for you to be able to see the stuff that I'm seeing as far as like court dockets, documents, uh, paperwork, pictures, videos. It's so much better. And and more informative if it's on video. So I'm going to be starting that soon. But for now, we're going to have to stick with audio. So here is the court docket below, which I can't show you. And it says, what more proof is needed to show that the government is protecting Ray Epps, said an attorney who is fearful of retaliation. Yes, this is it is completely bizarre how this guy has seemingly escaped all accountability for, I don't know, telling people to go into the Capitol. I mean, the, the list of things that this guy has done to incite, really, to incite a riot. When you're telling protesters to go inside the Capitol building, mind you, they are going after Donald Trump 
for telling people to go to the Capitol peacefully and patriotically. But this guy tells the protesters to go inside the Capitol building. And yet, a $500 fine and a year probation. This is disgusting, folks. It really is, man. And I don't really, I I don't know how else to explain it other than I don't know who he's working for. You know, this is one of those things like it, it, it is, he is part of something. What he's part of, I have no idea. And I'm telling you, we're probably going to find out years from now when the truth finally prevails. And it just like right now, the J6 narrative is starting to fall apart. The more footage that comes out, the more information that's released, the more the entire damn thing looks like a false flag operation, right? Conducted by the United States government against the American people. That's what this was. In my opinion, that's exactly what this was. And it's not just my opinion. There is a plethora of evidence to suggest that this was incited, that this was a false flag operation conducted by the intel agencies like the FBI. Who knows? Who knows who else? But we're starting to learn that there was a lot of undercover informants there. And the reason why they're undercover informants and not, you know, quote unquote, FBI employees is because they can use them a lot differently. They don't have to claim that they're working for them. They don't have to reveal a lot of stuff. They essentially have more control over what gets released to the public when they use FBI informants, right? What, has to, what can be released on FOIA documents, they know the game. These, like I said, these people are very smart, cunning, and evil. So they know how to play the game. And people on, people on the left, I watched the debate the other night with Alex Jones, two brothers that are constantly on Twitter. Uh, the, the very, very Trump deranged people that I don't know if they're paid by the Biden campaign. I don't know. But it was a, a really good debate. Uh, it was essentially all about January 6th. And it was four hours long. You had Alex Jones. You had Darren Beatty from Revolver News. And you had Glenn Greenwald versus his I guess his name is Destiny. I don't know who he is, but he's a leftist which is apparent when you watch the video. I guess I don't want to I guess I can leave it in my podcast description. I'll leave the the link to the to the debate because it's really good and it's these two brothers that are on Twitter all the time that hate Trump the most. I don't even know who they are, but um you know the left love these two guys. Uh, I don't know if they're brothers or they're dating. I have no idea. But it they are clearly suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. They are clearly To make a long story short, the left got absolutely roasted, but there is something that revealed itself at the end of that debate. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched really just highlights from it because who's going to watch a four hour debate? I don't even know how these people debated for four hours. In the end, I concluded they are the epitome of leftism in our country today, in the Democrat Party. They are very, very naive. They are completely 100% convinced that the FBI would never conduct a false flag operation against the American people. Like, again, they are suffering from extreme denialism. We have said this over and over before. I think that is the key problem with the left right now. They are suffering from extreme denialism, and they have the left-wing media, which is 95% of the media, that confirms their bias. And so they get stuck in this giant echo chamber and only until they go up against facts, evidence, videos, and people that actually know what they're talking about, they break down. And, and in fact, that's exactly what happened in that debate. So that is what I concluded at the end is that these people, they're just so naive. And I don't know if it's on purpose. I don't know. And that's a question that you really, it, it, it is a very deep question if you get to the bottom of it. Do these people actually believe their lies? I don't know. But if they do actually believe their lies, then are they lying? I don't know. But it is clear and obvious that these people are naive. When you can see Ray Epps involved as much as he was, when you can watch a video of Ray Epps telling people to go inside the Capitol, and yet Ray Epps is the only person that they have on video telling people to go inside the Capitol that gets a year probation and no jail time. When you have people that just merely touched a Trump sign sitting in prison, these people don't find that a little ironic at all. They think it's completely normal. So I don't know what else to tell them. I mean, if you have people that are suffering from denialism, there's nothing you can do to convince them. 
It's not like these people on the left are going to come out and apologize and say, you know what, you're right. It's never going to happen. These people are never going to admit when they're wrong. Have we got an apology for the Russia collusion hoax that they pushed for three and a half years? No. Has the media come out and apologized to the American people for pushing that hoax, that lie, onto the public? No. Have they given back their Pulitzer Prizes for, for that Russia collusion story? These people got rewards, journalism awards, the Pulitzer, for writing about the Russia collusion hoax that we now know is a lie. <laughs> so it's like they're living in their own little, their own little world, man. And so it, I just find it just extremely ironic how Ray Epps is the only one that this guy, that the, that the left defends, that the media defends, that Liz Cheney, Adam Kissinger defends. The J6 committee defends the only Trump supporter, the MAGA supporter, a guy wearing a MAGA hat, telling people to go inside the Capitol. And he is completely protected from the left. And here is some audio from Greg Price on Twitter. Um, This actually just came out today, and it's already got 1.7 million views. That's good. That's good because that means these people are losing the narrative. It's bad. Because that means they're going to get more desperate. And they are. And I'm going to explain to you what that means in just a second. So here's a video from Greg Price. He says, Ray Epps, the only January 6th protester who actually told people to go into the Capitol, has been officially sentenced to one year probation, $500 restitution, and 100 hours community service. While many J6 protesters are rotting in jail for nonviolent crimes, Epps escapes a prison term entirely. And here is some audio of all the footage that they have of Ray Epps on the Capitol that day. Here, check this out. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. What? No! No! Peacefully! Fed! 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 Tomorrow? I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. Well, let's not say it. We need... We Let's need to safe. go. I'll say it. All right. We need to go in. Shut the fuck up, Boomer. To the Capitol. Based right. Fed posting? All right. <laughs> we need to go into the Capitol. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> okay. We are going to the Capitol where our problems are. It's that direction. Please spread the word. All right. No, Dave, but one more thing. Yeah, so can we go up there? No? When we go in. Are we going to get arrested if we go up there? Yeah. You don't need to get shot. Arrest us all. Okay, folks, it's, it doesn't make any sense. All right? They are charging Donald Trump for inciting the riot. When this guy said the same exact thing, essentially. Did he not? I mean, so they're charging Donald Trump for inciting the riot that day for, well, the, what they call an insurrection, which it's not an insurrection and everybody knows it. But yet Donald Trump's being charged for that. But Ray Epps isn't when he told people to go into the Capitol. He directed the crowd towards the Capitol grounds. It just doesn't make sense, man. I'm sorry it doesn't. And anybody on the left that defends this, feel free to contact me on my email, stephentoriello at gmail.com. You can contact me on my social media, at Stephen Torriello, and you explain to me why you're perfectly fine with Ray Epps and you don't see anything wrong with Ray Epps getting no jail time, 100 hours community service, and a $500 fine, and a one-year probation. You explain to me how that makes any sense when you have people that just merely touched a sign, and now you have even more people that are being targeted. Thousands. Thousands of people are being charged, arrested, and sitting in jail for much less, for, for just walking into the Capitol building that had the doors open. But yet Ray Epps seemingly just escapes all of it. One year probation, no jail time, folks. Please make that make sense. Meanwhile, so while Ray Epps is seemingly getting off scot-free uh, with one year probation and a, a community service, The DOJ is threatening to charge thousands more J6 trespassers. Yes, so they're going after another batch. They're casting their net once again for more American citizens that went to go petition their government and protest on their capital on January 6th. 
They're going after more. I got an article here from Julie Kelly, which is she has been absolutely amazing on this entire January 6th narrative. She's been there from day one, day in and day out, going to the court, uh, going to the hearings, going to the trials. She knows every nook and cranny about January 6th. And here is an article from her Substack. She says, U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves, and this just came out yesterday, U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves warns last week his office would hunt down Americans who stood on government property on January 6th, but recent court activity could shut down his latest crusade of terror. So in a brazen act of political theater worthy of an ethics investigation, U.S. Attorney of the District of Columbia Matthew Graves gave an hour-long rehash of events of January 6th to a handful of reporters last week. Graves, a Biden 2020 campaign advisor who was appointed by Biden in November 2021, is overseeing the Department of Justice's unprecedented and ongoing criminal investigation into the four-hour disturbance that has so far resulted in the arrest of more than 1,200 Americans. The left doesn't find that a little bizarre. Like, that doesn't seem a little off to anybody. That this guy, Matthew Graves, was a Biden 2020 campaign advisor who has now been appointed as U.S. attorney that is targeting Joe Biden's political dissenters. Like that doesn't seem a little bit, I don't know, tyrannical to anybody, a little bit fascistic, maybe. I mean, like that, that, like to me, that just throws up all kinds of red flags. Like, wait a minute. So you got a guy, right? Matthew Graves was Joe Biden's campaign advisor who has been appointed to overseeing the Department of Justice's unprecedented criminal investigation into January 6th, where he is targeting and hunting down in the biggest manhunt in DOJ history all of Joe Biden's political dissenters, Republicans, Trump voters. Like, that doesn't throw up any red flags for anyone? (laughs) Oh, it gets crazier. It gets crazier here. So acting more like a partisan member of the January 6th Select Committee than an unbiased government prosecutor, Graves used inflammatory and in some instances inaccurate language to describe what happened that afternoon and his office's continued pursuit of the perpetrators. Quote, on January 6, 2021, the United States lost control of the grounds around its capital and most of the capital itself, Graves said from his office on January 4th. The same day, Joe Biden released his first campaign ad featuring several clips of the Capitol protest. In scenes reminiscent of a medieval battle, officers engaged in hand-to-hand combat with members of the invading force. That was Joe Biden's campaign ad. Let me read that again. This is what it said in his campaign ad. In scenes reminiscent of a medieval battle, officers engaged in hand-to-hand combat with members of the invading force. They are hitting this J6 narrative hard. And I'm telling you right now, folks, it's going to fail. This stuff is going to blow up in these people's faces bigger than shit. Because everybody is starting to see this for exactly what it is. Everybody is starting to see what a sham that J6 Select Committee was. Everybody is starting to see how they selectively picked video footage from that day and revealed it to the public by bits and pieces, mind you, video footage that was edited by a NBC producer, I think, in order to to dramify it, to add audio and and get the most drama they could out of it to 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 rally up as as much emotion as they can from the viewer. Th- th- so like <laughs> this is the type of rhetoric that we're hearing from this from the Biden campaign. So let's not actually campaign on Joe Biden's accomplishments because it's obvious there is none. So all we're going to do is go after Donald Trump, right? Who they now say is the next coming Hitler. We all knew that was coming. We said this months ago on this on this show that they were going to call Donald Trump the next coming Hitler. Not just he's he's the next coming Hitler, he's actually worse than Hitler. Is something we listened to from CNN not that long ago. I played it on the show. We already talked about this. I knew this was going to be their campaign, but I'm telling you folks, I'm glad it's this because this is going to be an absolute shit show for these people. If Joe Biden and the Biden campaign think they're going to be able to go out there on the stump and Joe Biden's not going to be able to talk about any of his accomplishments, people are so tired of this bullshit 
They are so tired of what the Democrats have done to this country the last eight, nine years. And it all started back in 2016 when the Democrats could not accept that Donald Trump won the election. Yes, that's right. They are the OG of election deniers. These people have been denying elections for as long as I can remember. So people are starting to realize, wait a minute. First of all, Donald Trump is not Hitler because we've already had him for four years and gave this country the best years it's seen in decades. There is no place or manner where they are going to be able to convince sane, rational Americans that Donald Trump is worse than Hitler and that January 6th was worse than Pearl Harbor. But that is what they're going to try and do. And boy, are they trying hard. And what's even more scary is that now that you, you have a justice system, that now it, it is a justice system that has been politicized and is going to be working as Joe Biden's campaign tool is what they're going to do. And so as this guy is out there hunting down Americans who just step foot on Capitol grounds now. So we're now we're not talking about people inside the building, but now we're talking about people outside the building here. Check this out. An important note when it comes to our prosecutions about those who remained outside the building. We have used our prosecutorial discretion to primarily focus on those who entered the building or those who engaged in violent or corrupt conduct on Capitol grounds. But if a person knowingly entered the restricted area without authorization, they had already committed a federal crime. Make no mistake, thousands of people occupied an area that they were not authorized to be present in in the first place. Right. All right. So back to Julie Kelly here. So Graves, who admitted during congressional testimony last year, his office had dropped all charges against 2020 rioters in D.C., falsely claimed that protest represented the quote unquote largest single day mass assault of law enforcement in our nation's history. Huh. He regurgitated well-worn bromides about the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, then bragged about how his office's success in jury trials in the most democratic city in the country. Yeah, this is why they're throwing this is why they're running all these cases out of D.C. And these judges will not allow these people to be prosecuted in their home states is because they know this is a bunch of bullshit. And if they let them go back to their home states and be tried there, that the people, a jury of their peers is going to let them go. That's why. So they're essentially being held prisoner, captive in their own nation's capital so that they can sit in front of a jury, not of their peers, but of a bunch of politicized partisan jurors, jurors that have been poisoned by the rhetoric of people just like Matthew Graves and CNN, MSNBC. You mean to tell me if you as a Republican, would you feel safe going to a trial in your nation's capital in Washington, D.C.? As a Trump voter, as a Republican conservative, would you feel comfortable going standing trial in front of a jury in Washington, D.C.? No, of course not. Why? Because, you know, Washington, D.C. is filled with about 99 percent Democrat. That's why. And these people have been completely, completely subdued by Trump derangement syndrome. This is a mental disorder at this point, And I've been saying this for months. Trump derangement syndrome is a real thing, and we're watching this mind virus take over our justice system, take over the prosecutors, the judges, the attorney generals. It's taking over everything. And so it's certainly taking over the jury. And the reason why Joe Biden is coming out with all this rhetoric in his speeches and, and you have this guy, Matthew Graves, going out there on the stump, threatening to hunt down thousands more of Americans is because they're trying to poison future jury pools. That is what they're doing. Mark Levin said this, and we said this months and months ago. The reason why they leak evidence, the reason why the Department of Justice, Jack Smith, the reason why they're playing the way that they're playing is that they're trying these cases in the court of public opinion. But you can't do it by leaking evidence and then gagging Donald Trump so that he can't defend himself. What we're watching is the most egregious behavior from a justice system, we will ever probably see in our lifetimes. And I certainly hope so, because this shit better stop come 2025. This justice system that we're watching right now, where this Trump deranged lunatics are hunting down Americans all across the country for going to their nation's capital to petition their government. 
and the way that they're using these laws, you know, these 150 year old laws and the way that they're 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 casting this broad net in the DOJ's largest persecution in U.S. history is terrifying. It really is terrifying. It's going to get worse. It's unsustainable. You can't have a justice system like this and expect to keep a democracy or in a constitutional republic as which we are. I am so sick and tired of hearing the words democracy come out of these people's mouths while these people are actively and knowingly pissing on the constitution of our country, pissing on our democracy. You have these people cheering about how Donald Trump's a threat to democracy as they are trying to remove Joe Biden's chief political rival from the ballot so nobody can vote for him. These people don't give a damn about democracy. Unless democracy means power, these people don't give a flying shit. It's all a gimmick, folks. It's all smoke and mirrors with these people. They will say whatever they have to say to get a desired outcome. That is it. And so unsatisfied with the, so back to Julie Kelly here. So unsatisfied with the largest criminal caseload in DOJ history and a perfect conviction rate in January 6th trial, juries have not acquitted a single J6 defendant in two years. Bloodlust on behalf of the man responsible for his job and the base of the Democratic Party is growing. Yeah, bloodlust is the perfect name for it. These people are thirsty for blood. They want blood and they cannot get enough of it. These people are so sick. They have become so deranged with Trump derangement syndrome that I truly do believe if Matthew Graves came out tomorrow and said, we have a list of all Trump voters in the country and we're going to round them up out of their homes and put them on trains and send them to concentration camps, the Democratic Party would be cheering for it. They would be popping corks of champagne. I I shit you not. I'm telling you, these people are sick. They have reached a level of bloodlust like we have never seen before. They are sick. They have been deranged. Their hatred, their souls have been filled with hatred for anything Donald Trump. And all of this is to blame 100% on the media. I don't blame it on anybody else but the media, folks. This is all their fault. From 2016, what they could have done in 2016 after Hillary Clinton lost, is they could have said, okay, better luck next time, I guess. But they didn't do that. No, all of this insanity started back in 2016 when these people could not accept that Donald Trump won the election. And they took what was supposed to be an op-ed by uh, Christopher Steele that Hillary Clinton paid for and, and marked it down as campaign financing, which is exactly what Donald Trump's being persecuted for in New York. Hillary Clinton pays for that dossier, that fake Russian dossier with campaign funds, right? And marks it under campaign funds. So she, the exact same thing that Donald Trump did with the whole Stormy Daniels thing. If they just would have let it go, just let it go. After Hillary Clinton lost, let it go. Donald Trump would be finishing out his last year of a two-term presidency right now. These people would have Donald Trump done and out of their hair in, a, in 10 months, done, gone forever, never be able to set foot in the White House again. But I am a firm believer. I am convinced that the media want Donald Trump to be president. They do. The media was dying before 2016. CNN, MSNBC, the media outlets, cable news was dying. Because of alternative outlets like podcasts and YouTube videos and alternative media outlets like this one, the media was dying. 2016, Donald Trump single-handedly saved the mainstream media. And so these people, they used Donald Trump to make money. Think about it. Think of all the crap out there that the media has done in order to gin up hatred for Donald Trump. It is, it is mind-blowing what they have done to the American population. And then they want to sit there and accuse Donald Trump of being divisive. Nobody was divisive in 2016. The Republican Party and the 64 million people that voted for Donald Trump were perfectly happy, right? It was the Democrats that started their shenanigans in 2016, 17, 18, and it hasn't stopped since. This has been a a freaking just a, a jihad against Donald Trump for going on nine 
years, folks. Nine years. It really is exhausting. A lot of people, I mean, they're just so burnt out. And the media knows this. Joe Biden knows this. Democrats, the, the evil Democrats, you know, the powers that be, the deep state, the, the establishment, they know this. And so this is why they're trying to gin up all the hatred again in order to win an election. All this is for power, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it's for. These people don't give a flying shit about the country. If they actually cared about the country, then they would be telling you to vote for the guy that gave this country the best years it's seen in decades. Joe and Mika don't give a flying shit if Joe Biden wins the election. Inflation doesn't, inf- doesn't affect them. The prices of groceries don't affect them. The prices of gas don't affect them. All these media talking heads and all the deep state bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. in the swamp, they can give a flying shit what shape the country's in because they're still making bank. In fact, they would rather have Joe Biden because this guy is, is a freaking mummy. He is a walking mannequin. So they could give a flying shit. If they would rather have Joe Biden so that they can continue on their shenanigans. It's just like I said it from the very first day of the show. I compare Joe Biden to the old guy that invites young 18, 19 year olds to his house to party and he buys them booze and the young teenagers are drinking his booze while making fun of him behind his back. And so they're using the old man to party at his house and drink his booze. This pretty much sums up what we're watching out of this White House right now. Nobody knows who's running this country. It's certainly not Joe Biden. You just had the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, was gone for a week and nobody even knew that you're talking about the guy in the highest level in the chain of command, the guy that that has the nuclear codes. And in fact, the country would need him. He is a a a vital part of that chain of command. They would not be able to launch a counter offensive. They would not be able to launch a counter strike without Lloyd Austin. And this guy was just gone for a week. Didn't tell anybody. He should be fired. I don't know if maybe it's criminal. I don't know. This is a big story that's out there right now. But I don't really know enough about the inner workings of the bureaucracy to, I don't know if it's a crime. I have no idea. But it's a big story out there right now. And it's true. And what does Biden do? Oh, it's okay. Folks, the guy is not running this country. He's been on vacation for well over half of his administration. He just came back, I think, from the Caribbean islands. Like this is, I mean, the system is so broken. And the only people that it hurts is the regular American people. Me, you. So you would think that the media and all these talking heads would look at the successful Trump administration because... No one argues that the Trump administration was successful. Nobody does. None of these talking heads on the Pravda media will come out and say, oh, Donald Trump's economy was not that good. Nobody says that. Nobody. At the very most, you'll get, oh, it was Obama's economy. But no one believes that shit anyways. Oh, it's it's the it's the guy who was president four years ago's economy. Get the hell out of here. Everybody's seen that Donald Trump's economy was amazing. Donald Trump gave this country the best four years it's seen in decades. But yet, for some weird reason, all the rich, power-hungry elites are trying to convince you, the American people, that you should want to continue this disaster, this human pandemic of a presidential administration, the Biden administration, all so that they can keep and retain their power while we struggle. Voting for Donald Trump is the only way out of this mess. It's the only way. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Not Nikki Haley, not Ron DeSantis, although I like Ron DeSantis and I, I was actually supporting him before they raided Donald Trump's home. Um, but, you know, it's this whole notion that, you know, Ron DeSantis could win and Donald Trump can't. It doesn't make any sense. You know, that like I, I get where the I get the point where I get where these people are coming from. They're like, oh, well, people hate Donald Trump so much that it's going to cost him the election. But you have to ask yourself, so you're telling me that they wouldn't hate Ron DeSantis just as much? You mean to tell me the media won't do smear campaigns against Ron DeSantis? You mean to tell me Biden's Department of Justice won't target Ron DeSantis like they are Donald Trump? Come on. It doesn't make any sense. You want the guy that has broken records twice when it comes to voting. He got 64 million the first time and then broke another record 
by getting more votes the second time. And then we're supposed to just drop all that and start with somebody new, like a Nikki Haley? Uh Uh-uh, not happening, folks. I just, the reason why I wanted to talk about this today, this should be terrifying to everybody. What we're watching, I had somebody, uh, you know, a lot of people when they, when they come up to me, when they call me or they ask me or they reach out to me in general, they'll, you know, they'll ask me, so what do you think is going to happen in the 2024 election? What do you think is going to happen in the next year, in the next 10 months? The only thing that I can respond with is chaos, chaos. That is the only thing I see in our future is chaos, whether Donald Trump wins or loses. Because if Donald Trump wins, then what are you going to get? Mass protesting. You're going to get, you know, cities burning down again. BLM, Antifa is going to be out. It's going to be the, the 2024 summer of love again. And then if Joe Biden wins, you're going to have the other half of the country that are going to see that they just got ripped off and they just watched their democracy get turned to ashes right in front of their face. Nobody is going to accept a Joe Biden win at this point. This is what these people don't understand. They never understand. They never can see the unintended consequences of what they're doing. They can never look ahead. Right now, think about it. If Joe Biden were to win, do you think the country is going to look at it as a fair, legit election? No. Why? Because these people are interfering in people's, in the people's elections 10 months away from their election by, by kneecapping the, Joe Biden's chief political rival. So even if Joe Biden wins, he's not really going to win. This is what these people aren't getting. It's not enough just to win so that the, the person that won can act like a tyrant and just, you know, rule by dictate with executive orders, you have to give a sense of legitimacy. You can't just be like, oh, we won by 5,000 votes because we kneecapped your opponent. We kneecapped your candidate and locked him up. Like, that's not good enough. People already don't trust our elections as it is. The, the majority of Americans don't trust our elections. This is the democracy that Democrats want for this country. This is, what we're watching is not democracy, folks. This is something much, much different. Yeah, maybe something in a banana republic. It certainly is that. If you want to, you read into uh, elections in Bolivia and Venezuela and Russia, some of the same stuff that we're watching happen in this country is the same stuff that happens when Putin runs for election and when the, the president runs for election in, um, in Venezuela. The same stuff. They, they remove their opponents from the ballot. They persecute them. They lock them up. They create crimes. They use their justice system to go after their political opponents. This is what the Democrats have done to this country, man. And so they can sit there and say that Donald Trump will destroy democracy all they want. All people have to do is look around and they're watching. They're watching their democracy being destroyed right in front of their faces. They sit there and accuse Donald Trump of being this this fascistic leader as they're watching Joe Biden and the Biden administration, the current president prosecuting his political rival, targeting dissenters, ruling by dictate, executive orders, buying votes, not following the justice system, not following Supreme Court law, not following the law when it comes to southern borders. Like everything that they accuse their opponents of doing, they themselves are doing. And it's, it's, it's really exactly what fascists do. You're living in a fascistic regime right now. You're living in a police state. The Democrat Party has brought this country down to third world status. I don't know if we've lost our country already and we're trying to get it back, or is our country on the brink of being lost and we're trying to save it? I don't know. I I always think about this all the time. I don't know if we've lost it and we didn't know it and we're trying to get it back or is it getting ready to be lost and we're trying to, keep, and we're trying to prevent it? I, I don't know. I can't tell. But as of right now, this is not America. Joe Biden will not be a legit president if this is how they want to run their elections. And this is not democracy. I don't know what this is. I find it so rich that it's actually the, the Democratic Party that's actually destroying our democracy. The Democrats have become everything they claim to hate. It's very bizarre. 
So anyways, I just wanted to get on here and let you know that the U.S. Um, US attorney, Matthew Graves, is starting another manhunt for thousands of people once again. Now he's not looking for people that went inside the building through open doors, but now he's looking for people that were just on the Capitol grounds. So outside the building now. So this is going to get worse because these people are getting more desperate. I've been saying this for weeks, and you know this if you listen to the show for a while. The closer we get to the election, the more Donald Trump's poll numbers go up, the more desperate these people are going to get. And the last thing you want to see is a desperate, weaponized Department of Justice, because it's not going to be pretty. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tune into next segment. I will be releasing that same time tomorrow. And Christmas time is officially over. The sixth was the last, um, was the last, technically the last day of Christmas. That's when people, it's the 12th day. And that's when people are supposed to bring down all their Christmas tree and ornaments and Christmas decorations, but not here. Oh no. We rocked that tree for at least, I don't know, man, at least until March. Yeah. We don't mess around here. We keep that stuff up. It's beautiful. We go out, actually, we get a real tree every year. It's kind of like our little tradition. We go out, we buy, everyone buys their own ornament. We put a date on it. We go out and buy our own tree. We found this perfect little spot that really a lot of people don't know about, but it is getting more popular. But it's amazing, and we take the kids. It's just, it's a good experience. It's a tradition in our family. And listen, as long as that thing is still green, it's staying up in our house, man. Um, So, but I guess the 6th is technically the last day of Christmas. So I just thought that, uh, I just seen that actually just a little bit ago. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. If you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me, Stephen Torrey, Yellow Show at gmail.com. I will respond back to you if you want to follow the show. You can follow the show on all social media platforms on Twitter or X. It is at Stephen Torrey Yellow. On Facebook, it's the Stephen Torrey Yellow Show. And then on TikTok, it's, I think you just Stephen Torrey Yellow. The best thing you do, go to your search engine, type up my name, Stephen with a V. T-A-U-R-I-E-L-L-O, and you will find all the social media platforms, all the places you can listen to the podcast. And uh, like I said earlier in the show, I'm going to get video. I'm going to get a video podcast started. I just have to find the space, and trust me, I'm working on it. Um, So that is going to be coming in due time. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you, and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.